Hey guys, how's it going? I got a new mic, so I thought I'd give it a test out and give you guys a little insight into my own training. Now, it's summer in Ireland time and uh, despite the grey clouds outside, I like to do a lot of training in the park nowadays. I've got a few hours every day, so hit the parks as much as possible. But as you know, we do bodyweight training is the main focus of that. I'm trying to gain skills and gain control of mastery of your body like a lot of you watching my video. Now, one important point here, bodyweight training, it does not mean it's no equipment training. And while we are using our bodyweight as resistant, and you can do all of this with no equipment, I find a lot of equipment to be quite helpful to speed up this process and just to help you along your path. So, first thing, I have my training bag over here. You can't see it, it's off camera. But I'm just gonna show you basically some of the equipment I'll bring with me most days to the park. Just let you know how I use it and how you can replicate your own. Now, first thing, I use rings a lot in my training. It's not really a massive focus to get good at rings, but to use them to get stronger. Now, I hang them from the trees in the park, but you find I don't want to go as the rings on separate straps. I don't want to be going up and down too much, or sometimes the branches aren't suitable depending where I am. But what I found is I have this thing. You see there, this is a three meter long lifting strap. I got this from a shop that deals with uh, equipment for cranes, other industrial lifting equipment, and it's rated at about two and a half tons. What this enables me to do is I put one set of straps on a ring at one end, one set for the other, then I pick a suitable tree branch, and I can just throw my rings over, then I've got a little U, careful not to hang on to just one side of this, but then I can do whatever I'm doing on my rings that day, and then when I want to take them down, I just pull them one side, pull them up over the top. There's no snags, there's no hassle. You can do a bit more variety of trees that you wouldn't necessarily be able to climb to hang your rings on. Also, it just saves you a bit of wear and tear on the actual straps of your rings. If you notice, they're quite thin nylon straps that they can get worn out quite easy. These things are designed for heavy construction use. They'll take a bit of abuse. Also, at 10 euros for this, you can't go wrong, you can replace them faster than you can replace the rings. So, invaluable. I find that useful for so many things. Next on my list of things I bring is this little device, and uh, this is company in balance. So, I got this in a shop, I think it was a Dick's one time when I was in San Francisco. I was over there for a few months, and I went in one day, and this has been a staple in my training for five years, it's great. You can see here, it's got elastics, but I can swap them in and out. I have another elastic here. Just have this one spare. So I've got a range of elastic. I've got every single one they have in the shop. They're about ten dollars each. They've lasted me five years at this stage. They're in great condition. You can just pop them in and out. You can use multiple elastics at a time. Mainly use this for mobility work, but sometimes I'll use it for a bit of strength work or a lot of elbow prehab if I'm doing curls and push downs for my elbow prehab. Great. It's in the, the handle is nice and handy. Got to hold on. Main thing you want when you got one of these is you need a way to attach it. Now that's just latex rubber. If you put it around the tree, it's going to get abraded. It's not going to last long. These have lasted me a long time because I've used one little of these equipment. So let me go in here. So I have this. This is a Petzl climbing swivel. It's a Petzl carabiner, and this is a lifting strap. Another little one. I think these are a couple of euros. So what I do with that, this comes in so handy. I just put my elastics around. I use this on the wall bars in the gym as well, but it's just so handy. It gives me a lot of options to quickly change things. So I have my carabiner, then I'll find a suitable tree, put this around, clip it in. This thing can move around on the swivel. It's nice, it's handy. It doesn't get ruined. That's the great thing, it keeps it safe. But it cost, you know, I spent 100 euros or maybe $100 on those bands at the time. So this has kept them from training in parks for years at this stage. Perfect. It also comes in handy for, I have just a normal, normal band. I use this, just same deal, just clip it on, put it on. If I'm just doing other things, then it gives you those options to quickly move it up and down. It also just keeps your bands nice and clean. So definitely worth getting that equipment. Costs about 30 euros in total for the swivel and carabiner. Definitely worth getting. Next thing, um, like, is my dark chocolate. What can I say, I like a bit of dark chocolate. And yeah, it's nice to have a little snack in the park when you're training. Uh, not 100% necessary, but definitely nice to have. 
Um, next, as you're training outdoors, well, it is great to go barefoot a lot of the time, and I do recommend it. It could be, I don't know, a bit skanky, a bit dirty, sometimes damp. So I have two pairs of shoes. First, one I'm going to show and talk about are these, my ballet shoes. I think I got these from a company called Dance Direct for about $14. They're block men's split sole leather ballet shoes. These are great. These have lasted me years as well. That you can use them, I use them a lot in the gym actually. We're not allowed to train barefoot. So I put on my ballet slippers and I'm not barefoot. Though I have complete freedom of motion. They're light, probably less than 100 grams. You can't go wrong, they last. They're well worth the investment. Nice split shell, so you can still flex and extend your foot without anything forcing and bending against it. Definite work getting for the kit bag. My next pair of shoes, these are my normal day-to-day -day shoes. These are a pair of Vivo Barefoots. These are great. I've had this pair for about 14 months now. It's probably time to get another pair. But I literally wear it every single day. The sole is about a millimetre and a half, two millimetres thick. It has great grip. I had uh, Vibram, or Vibram, yes, Vibram five fingers before. And I found they just immobilised my four toes. I could move my big toe fine, but my, what it was with a squeeze together. And while they could move, there was just that bit of friction. Whereas in these, they have a nice wide toe box. So you can just move it as much as you want. You can wiggle, you can extend. If you're running, you'll just find your roll over stuff quite much easier. They're also just incredibly flexible, so they don't really get in the way of if I'm doing handstands or other flexibility work, if I want to point my legs or extend. They're great, they're well worth the investment. I'm definitely going to buy another set of them. So what else have I got in here? So I have my headstand donut, which there's a way to make this on my Facebook page if you want to go check out those photos. It's quite straightforward. It has been a boon for my free headstand training. Hopefully by the end of the year I'm going to have, I'm not going to put a big time limit on this, but I should be able to, everything on course I should be able to juggle in a free headstand. Well, that's what I've set myself the task to. So we'll see how we get on with that and hopefully you guys can follow along. Next in the bag is a floss band. Now I find this not to be the magical cure-all that a lot of people say it is, but I find it great for very certain applications with myself and my clients. You may notice this is an unbranded floss band that I got from a company called D8 Fitness. That was 12 euros, I think, and it's a bit thicker than the normal floss band, which I prefer. So it's got a bit more stretch, a bit more power to it. I find, personally, in my own experience, I find floss bands great for gapping joints. That's what I use them all the time for, and I find them great. Just wrap it up. Boom, especially with my broke, this is my bad wrist, so I can just put it in, I'll gap it, get a bit of freedom, get a bit of motion freed up. Doesn't hurt me during training anymore. I find it also great on forearms of people if you feel a bit of niggle, tendonitis, thin, just bang on the floss band, sort of there. The other stuff, I didn't find it too great in the legs, didn't find it too great in the shoulders. I've tried it pretty much ever at this thing, didn't find it too great in the calves, but definitely on the arms. Maybe it's just the application of it, I don't know, but definitely worth having. Not the cure-all that a lot of people say they are. So, lastly, in the bag, then I'll show you one more thing, is my handstand blocks. Now, you notice I have a sloped handstand block. The reason for this is when I broke my wrist, I lost a lot of range of motion. So this just enables me to train handstands. Though I've regained that range of motion and I should be back to normal training. Enabled me just to at the time I wasn't actually able to do anything, but I thought it would. But I find with people, we make sloped handstand blocks. It can take a bit of the pressure off. I find them with the girls I train who are small, small 50 kilo, 150 centimeter girls. They have always have quite narrow wrists. They always have a lot of problems with the wrist, even though we have a lot of strengthening. So those sloped handstand blocks just take it off. Now to make these is so simple. These probably cost me less than $5 and an hour's work to make. Definitely, you don't want to be spending too much money on these. So I've just got some pieces of two by three, three pieces, stuck them together. I cut them to the desired width, which is roughly about, you can see that it's about my palms wide. You have them a bit wider, doesn't really matter. Then I just marked what I wanted the slope to be. So I have just an inch and a quarter slope here. So inch and a quarter, quarter inch up here, or is it an inch and a half, close to it anyway, whatever. And then you just mark your line, Get the hand saw out, saw it, 
Then just a small bit of sandpaper to round out the edges, get the splinters away. Sort it out. But they will smooth out over time with use and just using a bit of chalk on them. Definite worth getting. You can just use normal 2x3. Or is that 2x4? I think that's 2x4. 2x4, sorry. 2x4 guys. So you just boom, use it, cut a segment, a bit wider than your palm of your hand. It's great. Can wrap. Most thing the grip on it is three fingers the front, little finger around the sides. Some people turn out. I'm not a fan of that. Keep those fingers forward. But you don't need to spend fifty dollars on a pair of these. You can make them. Like you can make them. Everyone I know just. I think the same length of three meters of two by four has done so many best blocks of these. Now, lastly, from my training thing is my handstand board. I bring this to the box. This is just a piece of wood that was on a shelf that I reclaimed from the house. You can use anything. The reason I use that is basically our hands are very tactile in their very nature. We've got a lot of nerve endings in them. We're not used to the sensation we get in the ground. So when I'm training in parks, a lot of time if it's been raining, it's sunny, the ground texture changes and I can get into that a bit and it just gets a bit inconsistent. Sometimes you squeeze in, your fingers will sink in, other times they'll stay on top, the grass can be dry, the grass can be wet, but with this board I know I have a consistent surface that every time I go down, place it somewhere nice and level, I'm sort of, I know that I have a nice consistent surface to train on, it doesn't take much of my time to carry with me and it adds a lot, it also just when I'm using my blocks, if I'm doing walks and I want to slide my blocks out, if you're trying to slide them on grass, they can topple over, they won't move, on the board they slide with ease, it's quite easy, quite simple. All this equipment you see me use fits in my bag. I bring it with me to the park most days when I'm training. I get a lot of use out of it. I'd recommend give some of it a go. Try and make your own where you can. You can save a lot of money on this, but just remember, it's bodyweight training. It's not no equipment training. Anyway, if you like the videos, please just subscribe and I'll catch you later.